Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. A Touch of Life by Frank De La Rosa is his true story. During the darkest times of World War II in the Philippines, taking us to life on a remote island off the Philippine Islands in the 1940s and 50s called a patchwork quilt of memories, woven together in a multi-genre text which tells the story of his life. An invaluable look at history because of the perspective and point of view he shares. Because of the war, Frank started school at age nine, excelled as a student, high school valedictorian, earning a full college scholarship, Graduated with a B.S. degree in agricultural engineering, Frank earned postgraduate studies in the United States, degrees in the United States. He's become an accomplished writer. Five books published, Frank De La Rosa, author of A Touch of Life, Real Life Story of the Author During the Darkest Times of World War II in the Philippines, second edition, is our guest on This Week in America. Frank, welcome to the program. It is great to have you with us. Well... First, I have to tell you about myself. My name is uh, Frank De La Rosa. It's a Francisco long name, legal name. And we, have, we are a family of 10, mother and father, and uh, eight siblings. So I'm number five of the family, and uh, the name is Francisco. And I get married and I have uh, four boys and four girls. Now I have eight grandchildren fantastic that keeps you busy with uh, with the family i'm sure with the kids and uh, and all of the grandchildren i mentioned sort of briefly a little bit of background where and when were you born give us an idea the location uh, i was born in a remote island of the philippines one of the one of the 20th uh, big islands of the philippines which, the, which we call Catanduanes in the province, but I was born in a town of Catanduanes, uh, uh, like uh, 10 kilometers from my town where we have my, my father has a farm. I was born under that big cherry tree, and I, uh, my, my mother, my, I was delivered by an uh, unlicensed uh, with midwife, because during these times there, 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 were no, there were no licensed midwives. So uh, 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 an old lady delivered, delivered me, and I was born Francisco, and with God's grace, with God's grace, I was born healthy, and here I am, retired in Florida at 83 years old. Yeah, and writing books, and uh, we'll mention some of the others before we, we end the program. Our guest is Frank De La Rosa. His website, by the way, is frankadelarosa.com. De La Rosa is D-E-L-A-R-O-S-A. -A. You'll find the book at uh, Amazon, the usual places. You can link onto our website and get all of that information. This is such a fascinating read, what you've gone through, the joys, the sorrows, the highs and lows of your life. Let's talk about World War II, the impact it had on the Philippines, the impact it had on you as a child. Well, uh, first of all, we have to, to start to, uh, when the war started in the Philippines. The war started in the Philippines after the bomb, bombing of Pearl Harbor in December 7, 1941. And it, it, uh, they spread out all over the Southeast Asian countries, including the Philippines, and it spread wide, not, not, not excepting my hometown of Panganiban, where I was born. Everywhere saturated with Japanese. So, you can imagine how scary was that, how life, how, how life we were had before, because we were invaded by foreigners and they own us, you know, and we cannot do anything. We have no control of our country anymore. We are owned by the Japanese. You can only imagine how bad that was and what you went through, this transformation, and it comes out so well in Frank's book, A Touch of Life, Real Life Story, the author, During the Darkest Times of World War II in the Philippines, second edition. You'll find the book available wherever books are sold at Frank's website, which is frankadelarosa.com. We'll have that uh, uh, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. By the way, a video version of the program you'll find on YouTube. You can Google it on YouTube or go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, hit videos, and uh, and watch the interview with, with Frank. 
Let's talk about uh, the the war, the effect it had on the livelihood, the quality of life of the people. Talk about how things dramatically changed during that period. Of course, uh, war is not good to anybody, to any country. You know, it gives us fear, and uh, we, we, we don't feel secure in our lives. We don't know whether we live or we survive. So it's uh, we, had, we have to depend on our faith. And with our faith, become strong, even though there, there is so, it's very scary future, we, with the uncertainty of the future, we don't know whether we will survive. So, uh, the war really affected so much our town, you know, uh, the, our livelihood, our, uh, our everyday, our occupation, our activities, it is affected by the Japanese. So, uh, in order for us to be safe from the Japanese, uh, we uh, move far away from town to the nearby foot of the mountains and we built our hut, our houses there, our our Bahai Kopo we call it, it's a Nipahat cottage where we live. And uh, we have to start our uh, growing our livestock there, our, our growing our food to serve, to help uh, uh, serve the family. And it's really been a hard life. We are living in, in uh, fear all the time. We didn't know whether the Japanese would be kind to us or they will kill all of us. Because they, they we don't own our place anymore, they could just they could get our everything. They own everything. They will pick our food, our pigs, our fruits, our food on the table, and our house is never is never locked up. It's open for them. Even in the middle of the night, they could just come inside the house and get what they want. So life is very very scary. So we are we were apprehensive all the time. What they're gonna do to us? So I'm I'm happy and thankful that. God help us survive the scary time in the darkest moment in the Philippines. As you read Frank's book, A Touch of Life, you get this first-person account of what someone who was there was going through, their thoughts and their emotions. So often when we read history, it's just so, sort of cold paragraphs on a page, and it's hard to understand the story behind that because these are people who are impacted by the events going on in the world how did the townspeople there react to your town being invaded by the Japanese? What what was what was their reaction? Well, their their, their reaction was really very uh, it's very hard to describe how our people reacted, but they are ready to fight. So if if if, if anything happened, we we will have to fight back. But. I'm happy that they didn't do, they didn't harm us. There's no casualty. We just have to go by the, the rules, and we have to respect them. You have to bow before them, and you don't have you don't have to say anything against them. Otherwise, you get hurt or get killed. So people have no peace, living in fear all the time. They don't know what will be the outcome or the, the certainty of the future before them. It's interesting. You sort of think like. It, some of the village people, the townspeople would think, and Frank thinking, are, do we, are we compliant? Do we go along with what they're doing? Do we offer resistance? All of a sudden, your life has changed dramatically. How do you handle that? And how do you deal with the fear of, of what could happen? How did the Japanese soldiers treat you during the, the occupation of the town? What was their manner like in dealing with you? They didn't treat really, really, as bad, as long as you go by the rules, you know, and it so happened that there's um, they spotted a gold mine in our town where they get their coal to uh, uh, to fire their steamboat. That's why there were so many Japanese in our town. So the Japanese occupied the mayor's, uh, mayor's house and they built us a garrison. They put all their supplies there, ammunition there, and that's in the middle of the town. And when we passed by the when we passed by the garrison, going to church, because the church is behind the garrison, we have to bow before them, you know, and there's a, there are soldiers in front of the garrison. Once you even do it, you get hurt or get killed. So that's the scary part of it. We are just we are living in in, in fear all the time. A Touch of Life is uh, Frank's story. Frank A. Delarosa. that's D-E-L-A-R-O-S-A. His website is frankadelarosa.com. Book available, Amazon, the usual places. You can link on by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. What did the townspeople do to uh, uh, 
protect themselves. You mentioned the fear that they were living in. What did they do to protect themselves from the Japanese and what the Japanese could possibly do to, to you and everybody? So th- those people uh, believe that since our life, our lives are, in, are, 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 are not secured. So we decided to move out of the town proper. We have to move out to the mountain nearby to hide that we will be visible from the Japanese. So we built our own uh, uh, nip house, wooden house, anything that will uh, save from the external elements. So we have to grow our own food, uh, and then we have to uh, you have to clear the land, you have to clear the forest, and uh, we call that hanging system by boring the uh, by by boring the vegetation, and then you have to clean that, clear the debris, and then plant them with all the all the plants that we need, the crops that we need in order for us to survive. So we are hidden in the mountain, but the Japanese uh, could see us with, uh, with the smoke, you know, up billowing in the mountains because the mountains were all on, on fire. It's like a towering inferno now in the background, you yes. know, so it's very, it's very dramatic. The night was very dramatic. The background was uh, fire when the Japanese was there. Talk about the ending fight of the Japanese and the Filipino guerrillas that uh, in the hearing about the return of General MacArthur to the Philippines, all of that happening. uh, What was the reaction? Well, hearing of the news about MacArthur that he returned to the Philippines, of course, the the, the Japanese were were, were apprehensive about that. They were scared. So so they have since uh, the Japanese now are ready to surrender after bombing of uh, Nagasima and Nagasima uh, and Nagasaki, so they, they, they believe that they won't win the war anymore. So when, when MacArthur returned to the Philippines, so the Philippines now Philippine soldiers were supplied over war ammunition, war supplies. So there's no way that they, they could they could win the war. So after bombing of the two cities in uh, Japan, the Japanese surrendered. But there was a fight before they left my hometown. The, the uh, Japanese in the Filipino guerrilla fight hand in hand at the Camp 18 in the Bangkorhan Bridge, and all the, the Japanese soldiers were killed. They were dumped to the market waters of the, the, the river running by, and they flew back to the ocean. And you cannot, we cannot fish anymore because the, the water was dirty with Japanese corpses in there. When the war is over, how did the townspeople restore the town? You've got devastation. You've got destruction. It's over. How did they respond? How did they restore the, the town? Well, it, it, it's a really hard job after destructions, you know, yes. of buildings and government buildings in all the houses. They burn out the whole town, and uh, including the garrison in the, in the government buildings. And so we started life by, uh, by, by what we call this thing, um, we call that Bayanihan, you know, or the group where we help each other until everybody got their home. You have, the Filipinos are, are famous for resiliency. They are a very soulful person. So in spite of everything, of the hardship that we have, there was never been one casualty in our town because we are we, we are really brave. We are really brave. We are ready, ready to fight. We are small people, but we are we're ready to fight. Whatever comes, you have to fight. You know, if, if our life is in danger. So I'm happy that the, the war was over. No Japanese live in our town. They were all killed. And and then uh, by comes uh, July 4, 1946, the Philippines was granted independence by the United States of America as a, a republic. So we are now a republic. So once before we were Commonwealth of America for the last 40 years when the, when the, in the, after ending the Spanish-American War. So the, 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 Philipp, the Americans put the Philippines from the Spaniards and we are now a republic. Just a fascinating story. Time has gone by so quickly on the program. A few minutes left. Our guest is Frank A. De La Rosa. He's the author of A Touch of Life, uh, the book available at his website, frankadelarosa.com, amazon.com as well. Before we end up talking briefly about other books that are available that you've written, I mentioned you've, you've done five. Talk briefly about the inspiration for the book, what you hope this book accomplishes, 
and what it was like for you to go back and to relive these very challenging times for you as a young person. Well, uh, the reason why I was inspired to write this book because I want to share my experience during my childhood years in the Philippines. It was a forgotten memory, so I have to I have I have to relive it and share my experience with the people all over the world, not only for children, but for people who know how to read and want to read my book. So I'm happy that I have the opportunity. I have ample time to read the book. I'm now in the golden years of my life. So now I have I am writing everything that I know during my during my lifetime in the Philippines, you know. And I hope everybody will inspired to be inspired to read my book because there are there are lots of wisdom you're gonna pick up from that book. It's it's, it's very educational, historical, and I hope by sharing that everybody, I have a legacy left behind me when I'm gone. Well, uh, yes, and it, that will be the case. And as I mentioned before, it's not just names and dates and cities. It's people, and you put a face on the people and, and tell us about them. You're in the story, of course. Uh, a couple minutes left, and I wanted to talk about the other books briefly here at the end, but what has this been like for you to go back and to tell the story? You had a, uh, you grew up in a, in a poor family. You overcame so much, been very successful here in the United States, a published author now, a distinguished career in business. What's this like for you going back and and reliving these stories? And do you ever get these stories out of your mind? Is this something that stays with you for all of your life? Yes, I, I think uh, when, while I was still alive, in my golden years, I want to write down all that I remembered in my lifetime. I want to share them with all the, all the people in the world, just so you have to look behind what happened before. Now we know what, what it looks like. Now, how about before? What does the world look like? Is it good? Is it bad? Or uh, is lots of suffering and everything like that? Or lots of poverty everywhere? You know, I have to share my humble beginning because I came from a very poor family. <laughs> yeah, it's it has to be difficult. And I'm here trying to draw this out so you give us some idea. And there were so many layers to your life, like there are layers in, in all of our lives. It's not something that's uh, simple black and white. There is uh, There's transition, there's adjustment. And Frank has been able to do this so well, the book is A Touch of Life, real-life story of the author during the darkest times of World War II in the Philippines. Second edition, this is excellent reading. His story is a story of history. It's a story we all should know and appreciate and learn from. It's available at Frank's website, frankadelarosa.com, amazon.com. A very successful author that I mentioned. Let's talk briefly. You've got a series of books, actually three volumes, Pan American Flight A63 to Paradise. Uh, give us just a little bit of background on on that story that you continue for three volumes. Well, because the story is quite long, I cannot, I cannot put it in one book. It's really a pictorial book, but it tells a story. You know, because I have to write it down... It, it will have it, it will occupy so many volumes and I don't like to do that. Maybe a uh, version I have to uh, revise that book and to put into one but I, well I have still time because the book books was re written so long and I I cannot write everything so I have to congest it, to digest it so that that I could share it to the world. So that book is really very inspiring book and it tells my story and my journey in America and I only, I only, I only, I tell the share the people very much the breath inside of my life, you know, and no, no, nobody cares about the <laughs> dark side, but I just put everything that everybody will be happy to read them instead of crying or something like that. So I have to I share my legacy with the happy moments I have left and I have shared them with the world. And I hope they will learn a lesson from them. They will get, get uh, a wisdom from them or or they could share with other people and that's the way to reach out reaching out is like communicating through a book radio like what they are doing now or in any way you can to spread out what what you have you have to share in the world to make this place a better place to live in 
Well, you do that, and there are three volumes of Pan American Flight 863 to Paradise. Another book is The Thing of Beauty is a Joy Forever. Talk about that. No, oh, it's, 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 it's all about the good things I experienced in America. I, I, I mostly tell about my family, how beautiful they are, and of course, uh, my travel, my garden, I have a beautiful garden. Uh, I have an oasis in my garden. I have a green thumb, they said, and everything I touch turned green. Anybody who wants to learn about growing plants, you should call me or in touch with me. <laughs> with my touched plants. I mean, you're close enough that I can actually check you out. So I may have yeah, to do that as, as, as we're, I mean, as, show you my plants, as my we're working in, in gardenings here. And then the, the, the book Beyond Forgetting is a powerful book as well. Briefly, what's, what is that about? It's about the autobiography of my life. During my since my childhood up to the time I moved to America, the story of my life. Well, all of these books are available at uh, Frank's website. It's frankadelarosa.com. Uh, Delarosa is D E L A R O S A, frankadelarosa.com. Books available uh, at Amazon, all of the usual places. Such a powerful story, an important story. Again, putting uh, faces and people to all of the things we, we read about in history and the atrocities we went through to help us uh, deal with those and hopefully not have to deal with any again in, in the future. Frank, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Excellent job with the, uh, with the books. Oh, you've got another book I, I think you're working on in progress now. What else, what else are you working on? Because I know you've got things in, in the works here working right now with that children's book. I have to also to do something for the children. I love children. And while my kids are, my, my grandchildren are still small, I want to write books for them. And I hope they will enjoy it. Very soon, it's in the process now of getting published. I'm working on it. Well, that's exciting because you are a great storyteller. Uh, you, you found a, a second career here in, in writing. You've does, done such an excellent job with the five books and more on the way. And hopefully we can talk about those as well. Frank A. Delarosa, our guest on the program. FrankADelarosa.com is his website, video version of the program up on, uh, on YouTube. Frank, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me, Rick. It has been our pleasure. And once again, nobody will ever know me. <laughs> well, it's great to have you with us and to tell the story. And we'll direct you to Frank's website for information on A Touch of Life and all of his books, frankadelarosa.com. And of course, you can find all that on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.